This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Yarnmarket.com. Fabulous fashions, fast and friendly. You guys are familiar with Rhinebeck. Have you guys been here before? We have. We've, this is like my fourth, I think. And it's my third time. third time. I'm getting really good at it. And she comes from Nashville, so, you know, it's a, it's a track. It's a commitment. But did you have something else planned, or everything is around Rhinebeck? This is it. This is, this is the activity. <laughs> Yesterday, Anne was in the Metropolitan Museum in the ladies' room, and somebody came up to her and said, Are you Anne Shane from Mason Dixon Knitting? And she said, Well, yes, I am. And... Today, I'm walking around Rhinebeck, and this lady goes, are you Kay Gardner? Mason next to me, I go, yeah. She goes, I saw Ann yesterday in the ladies' room at the Metropolitan. Did I tell you that? <laughs> wow, sure. two celebrity moments for her. <laughs> yeah, so. Humbling, very humbling. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you guys have one of the coolest blogs around because it's the two of you sort of writing to each other. How did that idea actually come about? We were writing to each other, the two of us. <laughs> we were emailing each other and we saw the knitting blogs coming out and we thought, well, shoot, we could just do what we're doing in a blog. And that's what we did, right? Yeah, it was a lot of emailing and then it just seemed it's a very natural way to if you're writing to somebody. I always knew the blog would be great because I always knew we would have one reader that Kay would always be reading me and I would always read her so that was that was brilliant and that's that how was it was for a long time yeah. just me and Anne and you know leaving a comment I'd leave her a comment that's a great story Kay Thanks. but you always have something knitting related to talk about every day almost how does that come about you have other things going on in your lives how does knitting take such a big but you step you want to know something there's some knitting that we do that never makes it onto the blog oh my God. Yeah. you know isn't that true is that happened to you this has only been blogged a little bit I made Kay a scar for her um, 50th this. birthday, which yeah. is about a long time ago, a year and a half ago. <laughs> I finally got the second half of it done, but I'd never blogged the second part of it. But I did take pictures of it. I'm saving it for a dull moment. We'll just do a little. It's retrospective. a non hairy version of the Belinda wrap in our second book. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's in c sea silk With on this side, right. and that's on this right. side it's linen. It's wobby and it's sobby. You know, the sweet and the, the sweet and the rough. And it also has a big error right in the middle of it. Which I'm going to find it later. Yet. We won't show that. Yeah. It's just nature. It goes with my coat. Yeah, right. <laughs> Down is really great with linen. So but you guys have already shopped? What have you guys gotten so far? We show haven't your... nearly shopped, really. I haven't gotten anything. You I got, got Oh, show, show your, your stash indigo. enhancement. I'm pretty pleased about this. I came thinking that I was going to be going for hand spun, and I may yet, but this is a really great look. Here, I'll take my yarn back from you. Sorry. <laughs> But this is just a really great traditional kind of Gansey yarn, and it's it's real real indigo dyed, which means that it will fade and get great. It'll turn medium blue, and then eventually I'm just gonna well wash the worn hell out of this. Right. <laughs> Does it have a white core? No, it's a no. Wool, it so really went through. Yeah, that's. It I may not fade that much. It may, you know, I mean, it may be nice and dark for a long was time. Was there something you guys absolutely planned to get when you came here and that you you either got it already or disappointed you? The hand spun really is my thing that I like to get here just because it's very, it's like super special right. yarn. I mean, that is really, somebody sat there with it and was making it. Do so. you spin? I don't see. That's the thing. I'm the perfect customer for hand spin because I crave it and love it. But I'm just, I'm just not going to go spinning. I just, I've come very close to spinning. I almost had to learn this summer, but I got out of it just by the skin of my teeth. Because that's a whole other, you know. I know another stash. Line item, time. Yeah, I don't know if I have storage enough for the rovings that I would clearly end up with. So, so this, you know, hand spun's still on my list. But I'm pretty pleased I'm about I'm looking this. for rug hooking supplies. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I tried something last year with like a 
kind of like an egg beater thing with this rug cooking. It was called, oh, I forgot what oh, it was called. Oh, I tried that too. It was so much Did you fun. buy any of that stuff? No, but no. I'm thinking about yeah, it. I'm not doing that. Wait, it's like a, <laughs> they do that with yarn. It's regular yarn. Yeah, yeah not with not with fabric. Yes. Yeah, I didn't. I like the ones that are made out of strips of old wool right. that's been over-dyed. Could you pull like with a, like a, like and a you really have to hook. buy that. I think you have to buy it in person, you know? Yeah, so yeah. So I'm looking. They're going to do a demo in, uh, in the, in the egg beater thing? Yeah. That thing looks totally hazardous. I mean, it looks really, that and needle felting are like the scariest looking crafts. It's like a <laughs> shot. needles on a thing and you just start <laughs> yeah, just go right through somebody's arm. No problem. But it really makes a rug fast. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to get through your stash, there yeah. you go. Just blast through it. I'm just going to nail all this down to some burlap. <laughs> <laughs> just take care of that. It does satisfy that speed thing. That you yeah. Know. I'm not really interested in knitting up my yarn that fast, you know? No, I right. like You don't it. have that much I yarn. I like having it, yeah. <laughs> I have plenty, but I, I don't feel that, you know, I have to, like, make it into something. It's more of about appreciation of the yarn yeah. itself. Right? Owning it, yeah. It's a whole separate hobby. We it's your collection. Things. Yeah, yarn collecting and knitting. There's no necessary relationship right. between those. That's right. See that, buddy? <laughs> Did you want to talk about your your book or? Um, well, we do have a paperback edition of Mason Dixon Knitting coming oh, out. Oh, and the audio too. Yeah, the audio just came out and that was a lot of fun. We recorded it. I recorded my part in Nashville and Kay did hers in New York. And so I had, I got to fulfill yet another country music fantasy of going to a country music recording studio <laughs> and recording my knitting audio. <laughs> How did you guys decide to actually do an audio? Um, I think the publisher, uh, it's Knitting Out Loud is the is the company, and Kathy Goldner is the owner and producer. And so she produced over the phone. So I was there, you know, reading, and she would say, ah, it needs to be a little perkier there. And it, it turns out I, I tend to read in a very depressing voice. <laughs> so I sound pretty caffeinated, which is great. She helped me get there. But she just, she does audio books of knitting audio editions of yeah. books. So and, and and your your book uh, the second book or the first book? Uh, it was the second book with also some stories from the blog. Right. So because there really there, there was enough material from the second book to do part of an audio but she thought it would be good to have other stuff as well. So and that was fun to go back through and dig up stories. And have you guys ever thought of doing a podcast together? We really it's had a lot of work. <laughs> Don't you? I mean, you should know. It's a lot of work, right? Well, not not video. Video is too hard, but you guys would do great audio. I mean, this conversation right here is really cool. <laughs> It'd be fun. Maybe we should. It'd be just like emailing only talking on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like so, on Skype. This would be our podcast. So, Anne, what you doing? <laughs> uh, nothing much. <laughs> I got this awesome new microphone. <laughs> There'd be an audience for that, I'm sure. A small audience. Uh -huh. I'd listen to you. Yeah. Yeah, so the audio's out, and then the paperback of the first book, Mason Dixon Knitting, will be out in February, okay. so we're looking forward to that, and cool. uh, we have a few tricks up our sleeve for that, so that'll be fun when it comes out. Awesome. Our next live show is scheduled for Saturday, November 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Go to letsknittogether.com slash live for details. Yarnmarket.com, in collaboration with Art Yarns, is featuring a new yarn series called The Abbey Collection. It's based on these six beautiful pastel landscapes that were discovered in a monastery. The first yarn they're introducing is called Abbey Merino. Yarnmarket.com is offering two skeins of this lovely new yarn to one lucky viewer in our audience. So listen closely. In order to be eligible to win, you must click on the Abbey Collection contest link in our show notes for this episode number 62, which will take you to the Yarn Market blog where the Abbey Collection was announced. Leave a comment there on the Yarn Market blog answering this question. What inspires you to knit? The winner will be picked at random, and they'll get to choose whatever colorway they want. This lovely pin was made by my mother-in-law. She made it with her sewing machine. Thanks, Mom.